Um, I got your email. I see you're having problems with some of these auction uh, exercises. So let's take a look. Um, let's see. The first thing I'm going to suggest to you is I'm I'm going to resend the um, another version of um, that auction test. How come I can't scroll down here? That that auction test class because. Um, the one you had, um, this this one right here doesn't uh, function right as a as a test class. And also, I just want to show you, like um, one of the things that that um, programmers typically do is go is is write all their tests, even for the methods that they haven't written yet. Um, so, like this remove lot um, method. Um, you don't have written yet. What you can do is, if you go um, look at exercise 452, they have the um, uh, comment and the method signature that they want you to use for remove a lot. You could just cut and paste, or, or, or if, if you if you have it on uh, the book online, or if you have the book uh, electronically, or if you um, need to type it, you can just type it in um, and just add that uh, let's see, I added it down at the bottom just like this so what you can do is, you know, like I said, copy the comment line and the method signature and then for the body of your um, method, you can just say return null you have to return uh, something because um, the method expects you to return a lot object um, and for objects like this with the um, the capital letter ones, not the not the primitive types like int and uh, you know int and boolean those these oh, where is it? so like int if you have something like if you have int and you need to return you need to stub it out and return a value then you return oh, where's one and return value. Well, like so, like if you had a a method like uh, public int get number, and you wanted to stub that out, you would say like return zero. Or if you had a void, if you wanted to stub out a void um, thing. And if you had, if you needed parameters for it, you'd put in whatever parameters. Like that. Okay. So that's how you stub something out. So notice if it's void, you don't need a return um, statement. But if it returns a primitive, then you have to, you know, pick some value that that matches that primitive. And if it returns a um, you know, if you have a class type like this, you can just say return null. So we don't need these. Mm -mm. All right. So if you add this remove lot, then everything will compile nicely because um, there's a remove lot um, call in the tests. All right. Um, yeah. So this this test thing. So once you have that remove lot method in there, then this test thing will work. Okay. And then let's take a look at. Oh, also, um, yeah, good for you for for um, figuring out the um, get unsold. Um, and yeah, the internet can be a great resource. I think the takeaway here is that any object, including an ArrayList object, um, can be uh, returned, right? Or can be a a return type, or a you know local variable type, or anything like that. Okay, so um, just because it's a a generic type like this, you know, 
it's it's you can just treat it as just any any regular like you would any other type in that way okay so that's good um okay so what do we need to do so yeah so the the get lot here um let's see so it says write get lot so it does not rely on a lot with a particular uh number being stored at the at the index in the collection so what are they talking about there well the um the lots themselves have numbers associated with them so every time you create a lot you um you give it a number see here's a here's the constructor for it you give it a number and it stores that number in this instance variable okay so whenever you make a lot you can just make one here so if i say new lot and just say four uh, let's say box um that lot has in it if we do an inspect it has in it a particular number okay so the problem is what happens is um you know we can create an array of these lots let me do it like this so what we can do is let's 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 just go through the process of creating lots so um the way it works in here in auction is uh, when you may every time you make a bid right you do that um how do you get a lot number? Oh, where do the lot numbers come from? So you make a bid. Okay. Oh, okay. So we have next lot number equal one. And then how do we set? So so the when we start off, the lot number is one, right? And... Okay, and then every time we enter a lot, we um, create a lot with the, the next lot number. Okay, so we add it to the collection of lots and we increment the lot number. All right, so if we were to go through and do that right now, um, we would start off, our first lot would be lot number one. be number one and that's gonna be that'll be a red box and then the next one we create because we increment next number the next lot will be two blue box okay and then we create another one and that'll be um, three that's a what I say, oh, green box. How about that? Okay, so now we've got three boxes. So the question is, how do we rewrite get lot so it doesn't rely on a lot with a particular number? Because right now, what are we doing? How are we finding that? Uh, how are we finding like lot number two? Well, right now, what we're doing in our get lot. Excel. I'll find get lot. In get lot, what we do is we use the lot number that's passed. So if we get if we get past let's say we get past lot number two, right? Then um, we go down here and we do a get on the array list. For if we were past lot number two, then we'd look for um, number uh, one. We do a get on number one. So why do we do a get on number one if we want lot number two? Well, remember the way arrays are set up. Uh, the numbering for an array, the index for the array is zero, one, two, right? So we get so to get lot number 
Uh, so if we're past the number uh, uh, so if we're past the number yeah so if we're past the number two and we want to get lot number two that's zero one in the array okay so if we want to pull it out of the array that would be number one okay so that works as long as we're not removing any lots yeah but now let's say we get rid of lot number two so we remove that guy. So now we have lot number one and lot number three. And in the array, everything gets pushed over just like you just saw here. Right? When two went away, three just got mushed right over. So now the array holds zero and one. Okay? But um, if we if we use this same algorithm here and try to find lot number two it's going to it's going to subtract 1 so it'll it'll pick uh, number 1 from the um, array here so 0 1 but that's lot number 3 so that's not the one we want it and that still has in it if we look at it that still has the number 3 here okay so we need to do something to um, make sure that even though um, even though lots have been removed, we can still um, find the correct lot. Okay, so that's what this um, 451 is all about. Rewrite get lot so that it does not rely on a lot with a particular number being stored at index number minus one. Okay. So um, that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.